International Regulations for Preventing Collisions at Sea, Part D, Sound and Light Signals. Rule 32. Definitions. A. The word whistle means any sound signaling appliance capable of producing the prescribed blasts and which complies with the specifications in Annex 3 to these regulations. B. The term short blast means a blast of about one second's duration. C. The term prolonged blast means a blast of from 4 to 6 seconds is duration. Rule 33. Equipment for sound signals. A. A vessel of 12 meters or more in length shall be provided with a whistle. A vessel of 20 meters or more in length shall be provided with a bell in addition to a whistle and a vessel of 100 meters or more in length shall, in addition, be provided with a gong, the tone and sound of which cannot be confused with that of the bell. The whistle, bell and gong shall comply with the specification in Annex 3 to these regulations. The bell or gong or both may be replaced by other equipment having the same respective sound characteristics, provided that manual sounding of the required signals shall always be possible. B. A vessel of less than 12 meters in length shall not be obliged to carry the sound signaling appliances prescribed in paragraph A of this rule, but if she does not, she shall be provided with some other means of making an efficient sound signal. Rule 34. Maneuvering and Warning Signals a. When vessels are in sight of one another, a power-driven vessel underway, when maneuvering is authorized or required by these rules, shall indicate that maneuver by the following signals on her whistle, one short blast to mean I am altering my course to starboard, two short blasts to mean I am altering my course to port, three short blasts to mean I am operating a stern propulsion. b. Any vessel may supplement the whistle signals prescribed in paragraph a of this rule by light signals, repeated as appropriate, whilst the maneuver is being carried out. 1. These light signals shall have the following significance. 1. Flash to mean I am altering my course to starboard. 2. Flashes to mean I am altering my course to port. 3. Flashes to mean I am operating a stern propulsion. Two, the duration of each flash shall be about one second, the interval between flashes shall be about one second, and the interval between successive signals shall be not less than 10 seconds. 3. The light used for this signal shall, if fitted, be an all-round white light, visible at a minimum range of 5 miles, and shall comply with the provisions of Annex 1 to these regulations. c. When in sight of one another in a narrow channel or fairway, one, a vessel intending to overtake another shall in compliance with Rule 9, e. 1. Indicate her intention by the following signals on her whistle. 2. Prolonged blasts, followed by one short blast, to mean I intend to overtake you on your starboard side. 2. Prolonged blasts, followed by two short blasts, to mean I intend to overtake you on your port side. Two, the vessel about to be overtaken when acting in accordance with Rule 9, E, 1, shall indicate her agreement by the following signal on her whistle, one prolonged, one short, one prolonged and one short blast, in that order. D. When vessels in sight of one another are approaching each other and from any cause either vessel fails to understand the intentions or actions of the other, 
or is in doubt whether sufficient action is being taken by the other to avoid collision, the vessel in doubt shall immediately indicate such doubt by giving at least five short and rapid blasts on the whistle. Such signal may be supplemented by a light signal of at least five short and rapid flashes. e. A vessel nearing a bend or an area of a channel or fairway where other vessels may be obscured by an intervening obstruction shall sound one prolonged blast. Such signal shall be answered with a prolonged blast by any approaching vessel that may be within hearing around the bend or behind the intervening obstruction. f. If whistles are fitted on a vessel at a distance apart of more than 100 meters, one whistle only shall be used for giving maneuvering and warning signals. Rule 35. Sound signals in restricted visibility. In or near an area of restricted visibility, whether by day or night, the signals prescribed in this rule shall be used as follows. A. A power-driven vessel making way through the water shall sound at intervals of not more than two minutes one prolonged blast. B. A power-driven vessel underway but stopped and making no way through the water shall sound at intervals of not more than two minutes two prolonged blasts in succession with an interval of about two seconds between them. C. A vessel not under command, a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver, a vessel constrained by her draft, a sailing vessel, a vessel engaged in fishing and a vessel engaged in towing or pushing another vessel shall, instead of the signals prescribed in paragraphs, A, or, B, of this rule sound at intervals of not more than two minutes three blasts in succession, namely one prolonged followed by two short blasts. d. A vessel engaged in fishing, when at anchor, and a vessel restricted in her ability to maneuver when carrying out her work at anchor, shall instead of the signals prescribed in paragraph g. of this rule sound the signal prescribed in paragraph c. of this rule. e. A vessel towed or if more than one vessel is towed the last vessel of the tow, if manned, shall at intervals of not more than two minutes sound four blasts in succession, namely one prolonged followed by three short blasts. When practicable, this signal shall be made immediately after the signal made by the towing vessel. f. When a pushing vessel and a vessel being pushed ahead are rigidly connected in a composite unit, they shall be regarded as a power-driven vessel and shall give the signals prescribed in paragraphs a or b of this rule. g. A vessel at anchor shall at intervals of not more than one minute ring the bell rapidly for about five seconds. In a vessel of 100 meters or more in length, the bell shall be sounded in the forepart of the vessel and immediately after the ringing of the bell, the gong shall be sounded rapidly for about five seconds in the after part of the vessel. A vessel at anchor may in addition sound three blasts in succession, namely one short, one prolonged and one short blast, to give warning of her position and of the possibility of collision to an approaching vessel. h. A vessel aground shall give the bell signal and if required the gong signal prescribed in paragraph g of this rule and shall, in addition, give three separate and distinct strokes on the bell immediately before and after the rapid ringing of the bell. A vessel aground may in addition sound an appropriate whistle signal. I, a vessel of 12 meters or more but less than 20 meters in length shall not be obliged to give the bell signals prescribed in paragraphs G and H of this rule. However, if she does not, she shall make some other efficient sound signal at intervals of not more than two minutes. J, a vessel of less than 12 meters in length shall not be obliged to give the above mentioned signals but, if she does not, shall make some other efficient sound signal at intervals of not more than two minutes.
K, a pilot vessel, when engaged on pilotage duty may in addition to the signals prescribed in paragraphs A, B, or G, of this rule, sound an identity signal, consisting of four short blasts. Rule 36. Signals to attract attention. If necessary to attract the attention of another vessel, any vessel may make light or sound signals that cannot be mistaken for any signal authorized elsewhere in these rules, or may direct the beam of her searchlight in the direction of the danger, in such a way as not to embarrass any vessel. Any light to attract the attention of another vessel shall be such that it cannot be mistaken for any aid to navigation. For the purpose of this rule, the use of high-intensity intermittent or revolving lights, such as strobe lights, shall be avoided. Rule 37. Distress Signals. When a vessel is in distress and requires assistance, she shall use or exhibit the signals described in Annex 4 to these regulations.